let's see if you can bring it together and use your knowledge from the previous addition problems and do the following addition problems. So let's take a look at the first problem here. So you're asked to add like terms, but if you look at this problem, we do not have like terms right now. So mathematics builds on prior knowledge and keeps growing and growing. So every time you learn or learn to play with new objects or learn a new concept, see if you can combine that concept with previous concepts and build upon it. So let's do a formize only column and review quickly. We know fifth root of b to the fifth, that's the radical notation, which means fractional power of b to the power five over five, which is fifth root of b to the fifth, which is b. But we have b to the sixth, which we can break as b to the fifth times b, and we know that fifth root of b to the five is b, and then there will be an additional b inside. So two fifth root of b to the sixth will simplify as two b, fifth root of b. And that's because this b to the fifth here pulled out and became a b. So our problem will then change and make it look like 2b fifth root of b plus 11b fifth root of b. Now we have a common unit of b fifth root of b. So 2 and 11 will give you 13b fifth root of b. All right, let's take a look at second problem. So here's a problem. And as soon as you read this problem, maybe you reacted the following way, like, oh, no, 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 I can't do this. But remember, the whole point of this course is there is no can't. You have to attempt. So always stay positive and don't make assumptions based on how something looks. So just because it looks complicated does not necessarily mean it's complicated. So a mathematician does not give up. And that's what you are. You're a mathematician right now. So no giving up. Instead, you are going to do one thing at a time. So focus one thing at a time, stay positive, and be mindful, breathe, and focus. So if you did react like, oh, no, I can't do it, just step back, sit back in your chair, close your eyes, take a deep breath, inhale and soft exhale. Breathe in and out, and let's see what we can do. Open your eyes, and let's take a look. So we said one thing at a time. So let's take a look. Fifth root of b to the sixth, you already did that, didn't you? It's right here. And so any time you feel panicky, you just cover the problem up like we just did and do one thing that you know how to do, which we already saw. So instead of two, we have a five, and then there is an A. So the A will stay, and B to the six will simplify as B, fifth root of B. So in general, then, in order to solve complicated problems, you have to stay focused, stay positive, breathe. But on top of it, just look into your head. So open your file cabinet in your head and pull out the toolbox. What's a toolbox for a mathematician? It is the things that you have already learned. So what things have you learned? You've learned radicals. We know that nth root of x to the power n is x. We also know that if you have a different exponent x to power n, and m is the index, then another way to write is the same as x to the power n over m, right? So those are all the things that you know. And then the new thing you've learned on top of everything is add like terms. So those are all your tools that you are going to use to solve this problem. All right, so let's see. We already know that this first quantity here is 5a b fifth root of b. We have the second quantity here. So pause the video here and let's see what you can do. So you're just going to do that one thing. It's cube root b to the fifth. So we know that there are 11 a b cube root b squared. If you're stuck on that, can you tell me why we got a b? Cube root of b. So b to the fifth, 
That means three of these b's will come out as one b, because cube root of b cubed is one b, and then two more b's to make it b to the fifth. All right, let's see if you can complete seven square root three a to the third. Well, square root three we can't really do, but square root of a to the third we can. a to the third, we know square root of a squared is a. So it'll be seven a and one more a left inside. So one question at a time and one term at a time. So not to panic, stay positive and one term at a time. Pause the video, see if you can do this part. So whatever is outside, the 2b which is on the outside will stay outside. So it'll be plus 2b and then whatever you get from simplifying. Cube root of a to the third is a. Cube root of b squared, well, b squared 2 is smaller than 3, so we can't really do anything. So that b from before, a to the third, will give you an a outside. It escaped the radical symbol, and b squared remain as b squared. All right, let's take a look at 6ab, fifth root of b. So nothing to simplify here. Oh, that's easy, right? All right, so let's write it down. Last term. What do you think? Well, it already is in the simplified form. Nothing we can do about it. All right. So look, even though it was a complicated problem initially that you may have thought by just focusing on what you can do one thing at a time, we've now reduced the original problem to now looking at like units. So let's see if you can pause the video here and add like units. Go ahead, pause the video. All right, so what like terms do we have? We have five a, b, fifth root of b. So let's go looking for fifth root of b here which is the second last term here. You can see 6ab, fifth root of b, and 5ab, fifth root of b, so that'll give you five and six will give me 11ab, fifth root of b. We have 11ab cube root b squared, and 2ab cube root b squared. So 11 and two will give me 13ab cube root b squared, and then 7a square root 3a, and 1a square root 3a will give me eight, a square root 3a. So again, pause the video here. The red terms add up together. 5 and 6 give me 11 of those. The purple terms, 11 and 2, will give me 13 of those. And 7 and 1 will give me 8 of the last term. You see? So again, the main goal here is you can do the problem, but you are combining many different concepts together. So you need to have a working knowledge in your head. Make sure you always carry your toolbox. You sometimes just taking a pause and breathing allows you to look inside your own head like a filing cabinet and pull out the tools that you need. Let's focus our attention now on rational numbers. We talked about rational numbers as numbers that are written as the form a over b. A and B are integers. B has to be non-zero integer. So basically fractions, where numerator is A and denominator is B. So for example, if I wanted to look at two out of seven or two sevens or two to seven, those are all different ways uh, you can speak of fractions. So here I will have to have two pieces out of the seven shaded to represent two sevens visually. All right. However, if you look, I can divide this into more pieces, right? So for example, if I just chop this into thirds horizontally, now I have 21 pieces. So essentially what I've done is multiply numerator and denominator by three. So now I have six pieces out of 21 instead of two pieces out of seven. And you can see they occupy the same space visually. So that are, 2 over 7 and 6 over 21 are called equivalent fractions. This concept of making equivalent fractions is going to come in handy 
Because remember, in order to add rational numbers, we don't have any new things to learn except to remember how we need to have common units when you're looking at two different rational numbers added together. So the equivalent cons fraction concept is going to come in handy. So keep that in mind. OK, let's talk about how if we figure out how to add rational numbers where both numerator and denominator are counting numbers, then of course we can extend it to when they are integers. We can also extend it then our definition of addition to not just rational numbers, but also rational expressions. All right, so let's see how we can do this. So let's talk about two sevens. So here's two sevens, and then here is the equivalent fraction of six twenty ones, right? In order to make like units, we must understand what rational numbers really are. Two over seven, one over seven is a unit, and you have two copies of one over seven. Six twenty one. 6 over 21 is the same as 6 copies of 1 over 21. So the, here the unit is 1 over 21. Here the unit is 1 seventh. In terms of this picture, then, when I'm looking at it as 2 sevenths, the red vertical three pieces right here, that is my one unit. Whereas when I'm looking at it as 6 copies of 1 over 21, this little small red rectangle is going to be my unit. So it's the unit that is different in both, even though they represent the same equivalent fractions. So two equivalent fractions occupy the same space, but you can think of it as being covered with two vertical columns versus six little rectangles. All right, so how do we address adding rational numbers? We must start with some goal, right? Our goal is to figure out how to add two rational numbers or two fractions of the type a over b plus c over d. So numerator, denominator of the first plus numerator over denominator of the second. We can't just start doing it until we understand what the like units is going to be in this case. It's not obvious. So recall that a over b can be thought of as having a copies of 1 over b, which is what we just remembered from uh, module 1. So let's start with some examples to see if we can figure out what to do. 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. So remember, I can think of that as 2 copies of 1 sevenths plus 3 copies of 1 sevenths. So if you were to visualize it, it would be Unit is 1 seventh, so 2 copies of 1 seventh plus 3 copies of 1 seventh, which will give me 5 copies of 1 seventh or 5 sevenths. So when you're adding two fractions and the unit 1 seventh is the same, well, then it's the same kind of addition we've been doing before. 2x plus 3x is 5x. Um, 2 apples plus 3 apples is 5 apples. 2 1 7 plus 3 1 7 is 5 1 7 or 5 7. All right, well, what if you end up with 5 7 plus 4 7? So pause the video here. Let's see what you got. Go ahead and do it visually also and not just algebraically. Visual development will allow you to extend your definitions to other things. Yep, five copies of one seventh plus four copies of one seventh. We will give you nine copies of one seventh, right? So here we have visually uh, unit is one seventh, five copies of one seventh plus four copies of one seventh. So let's start filling them in. So here is two, but I need two more, but I can't fit any more in this one. So I'll have to have a separate hole and then color two more in. Now I have 5 plus 4, 9 1 7. So 9 1 7 is the same as one complete whole, and then the second one has 2 out of 7 shaded. So that's why 9 7 or 
1 and 2 sevenths. So our final answer would be 9 sevenths or 1 and 2 sevenths. So let's take a look at 1 half plus 1 third. Well, here I have one copy of a half and I have one copy of a third. They do not have the same unit. So pause the video here. See what you could do visually because if you can do it visually, you will understand the basic underlying principle. So go ahead, pause the video here and explore what we could do to solve the issue at hand that they do not have like units right now. All right, let's see what you've come up with. So one half visually would be one piece out of two. Let's get the same amount of whole and break it into thirds. And so now one out of three would be one third. You can see they are not of the same size, one third and one half. This is more than one third, one half, right? So one half is more than one third. So let's take a look at how we can get about it. Remember our concept of equivalent fractions? I can take this one out of two pieces and break each of these two into three equal pieces, which will make it six equal pieces here. I can take this one third, break it into two, all of them, so that'll make it six. So now I'll have the same number of pieces in both, and so I will have three pieces out of six, which is the same as one half, so unit here is one sixth because then making the unit one sixth, I can now have comparison between one half and one third. So if I want to add, that means put them together. So I have a hole here with six. I'm going to have the one half and one third appear here. So that's five out of six. So visually you can see that making equivalent fractions will allow us to get common unit. And then once we have common unit, we can of course add. So 3 1 6 plus 2 1 6 gives you 5 1 6 or 5 6. So our final answer will be 5 6. So the goal here was to make common units, in this case 6 1 6, because that allowed us to add. Let's see what happens for a different example. All right, let's take a look at the following problem. See what you can do. Pause the video here. Use the previous example as a template and visually tell us what happens when you add one half plus two thirds. Go ahead, try it on your own. You might, some of you, feel resistant to developing visual thinking, but visual thinking is going to pay tremendous dividends. It's always good to push your boundaries and get out of your comfort zone and learn something new. So don't just say, oh, I know how to add fractions, so I'm not going to worry about the visual representation. It will pay dividends, trust me. All right, so if you've come back from pausing the video, here's we got our one half like we did before. We can divide the same whole into thirds and have two thirds. We already saw that when it's working with one half and one third, that making the common unit of a sixth allows us to do um, one half and one third, in this case two thirds, with similar setup. So two thirds will be one, two, three, four pieces. One half is one, two, three pieces. Putting them together then, that's three of these, four of these. Only three fit here, so we need to have an additional hole and fill an additional strip so that we have seven out of six. So we have three copies of one six plus four copies of one sixth, which is seven copies of one sixth, or one and one sixth, right? So our final answer is seven six. All right, well, what happens if we have two fifths and one third? See if you can do it on your own. Pause the video, do it visually, and then tell us what happens. All right, so assuming you have come back from Attempting it, let's take a look at two-fifths and one-third. You can see I've drawn them a little differently than before because if I had to break the one-fifth into thirds horizontally, it's not going to fit here. It's going to be so teeny I won't be able to see it. So I'm going to do fifths horizontally, but I'm going to do thirds vertically. But note that the rectangular shape for this whole that in which I'm representing two-fifths is the same size as the whole that represents one out of three. So how do I put them together then? 
unless they have the same grid structure, same unit, we cannot add them. So I can overlap this vertical grid on this horizontal grid and this horizontal grid on this vertical grid. So it will look like this. Do you see that? So now they all have the same units. So making this grid is equivalent to saying uh, 2 times 3 over 5 times 3 because I took this 5 and broke it into thirds. So now I have 15 equal pieces on the bottom here. This hole is made up also out of 15 pieces because I took the thirds vertically and chopped it horizontally into fifths. So now they all made up out of 15 pieces so we can add them together. Adding means, so I have that piece that I had here overlaid here, and then these pieces need to move in here, so that would be that and that. So I took these pieces and moved them into this one, and now count how much we got. So we have six from the blue ones and five from the red ones, giving us 11 fifteenths, right? Because we had six 1 fifteenths and five 1 fifteenths, giving us 11 1 fifteenths, which is 11 fifteenths. So you can see how the equivalent fraction concept is totally coming to aid here, because otherwise we will not be able to add fractions. All right, let's take a look at this next example, see what you can do. Pause the video, and then we'll discuss it together. All right, so here I have 3 quarters, here I have uh, 5 sixths. Again, we can overlay the horizontal grid on top of the vertical one and the vertical on top of the horizontal to create equal number of pieces. And so it would look kind of like this, right? Once you have the grid, now we can put them together, these pieces, to figure out what the addition looks like. So 3 quarters plus 5, 6. Making this common grid overlay is really just rewriting it like this. So multiply both numerator denominator by 6 on the first fraction and 4 on the next one. That will give you 18 over 24, that's the yellow pieces, and 20 over 24, which is the red pieces. So in order to add, we'll have to put them together. So let's make our grid and transfer, let's say, the red ones first. So I have the red can go into the first box. I still have four left over here, so I can put four yellow ones here and the remaining ones here. So count how many you got here. One, two, three, four, five, ten, fourteen. So we have one whole and fourteen twenty-fourths. So we have thirty-eight twenty-fourths or one and fourteen twenty-fourths. So I answer to three-fourths plus five-six is one and fourteen twenty-fourths. But as you know, 14 24 equivalent fraction would be 7 twelfths because 7 times 2 is 14 and 12 times 2 is 24. So our answer to 3 quarters and 5 6 is 1 whole and 7 twelfths. What if I chose 3 quarters and 5 6 this way? Well, I have 3 out of 4 pieces and I have 5 out of 6. Now how can we divide them? So we can do the same, and we have, I'll chop this into halves, and this into halves, and look what happens then. So we have, that will go right there, that will go there, that will go there, and then the remaining pieces will go in the other one. This answer seems to look different than the one we had before. But take a look. So algebraically, we instead of Multiplying numerator denominator by 6, I'm multiplying numerator denominator by 3. And for the second one, I'm multiplying numerator denominator by 2 instead of 4, unlike the previous example. So I got 19 out of 12 pieces, which is 1 and 7 twelfths. So our final answer for 3 fourths plus 5 6 is 1 and 7 twelfths. But when we did it the other way, Instead of getting 1 and 7 twelfths, we ended up with 1 and 14 twenty-fourths, which is equivalent to 1 and 7 twelfths. So depending on what kind of uh, divisions you choose, what equivalent fractions or what unit you choose, you may get a different answer. But the beauty in mathematics is even if it looks different, 
it is equivalent to other forms of the same answer. All right, so just remember that, that you can always make sure your answer is in simplified form so that you cannot reduce it any further. So 14 24 is going to be reduced to 7 12. So you are not stuck using a particular unit. Just have to make sure that they both have equivalent number of pieces so that we can combine like units. What happens if you have something like mixed fractions? You can do it two ways. You can convert it into improper fractions and then add like we've shown before, or we can actually do it the following way. Look, so two and three quarters would be two whole and then three quarters. Four and one third would be four holes and one third. So to add them together, we have two holes, four holes, three quarters, one third. Two and four will give me the six. So that's two and then four. That will give me the six I need. And then I need to add the three quarters and the one third. So I will overlay the grid like we've done before and then add them together. So we have nine twelfths here and four twelfths here, which will give us 13 twelfths. So we have six whole plus nine twelfths. So these nine twelfths that came down here, and then also these four twelfths. So we need to start putting them here. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's the fourth one. So that means we're going to have 6 plus 13 twelfths, and you can see that 13 twelfths. So this 12 twelfths will make one whole, so that would be a 7, and then there is a 1 twelfth left over. So we have 7 and 1 twelfth would be our final answer. Let's see if you can uh, do the problem visualizing when the denominator on one of them is not a number but a variable x. So go ahead, pause the video here and think about how you could visualize 3 over x plus 2 over 5. And assume that x is large enough so that the number 3 is smaller than x. So x can be any number bigger than 3. In fact, make it so big that you don't have to worry about uh, whether you're going to have more than 1 or less than 1. Pause the video, see what you can do. Okay, assuming you are either stuck or you already got it, let's start you off. So let's say I can visualize 3 over x this way. So this distance from here to here is 1, 2, 3. So this is 3, and we have 3 strips out of how many we don't know because we don't know how big x is. So x is large enough that three strips fit inside of x, okay? So inside of this length x. The width, we're going to make the width 5 so that we can represent 2 fifths. And so that's two strips out of 5. So this way, the entire rectangle's area is 5x. 5 is the width and x is the length. 3 is uh, so x is bigger than 3, basically. Okay, Go ahead and figure out how you are going to add these two things together. You can overlay the grid like we did before. See what you can do. Pause the video and try to attempt to represent the sum 3 over x plus 2 over 5. Assuming you have done that, it would look like this. Look, so we took this uh, 2 fifths and overlaid this 3 on top of it so we could add them together. And the x is this x right here, right? So this length is x, this width is 5. We've overlaid the, the grid. So these three strips are these three green strips. So we need to do the same on x. So we need to move these pieces, which you can see here 3 times 5, which is 15. So 15 is the area enclosed here, x times 1 and x times 1, that's 2x's here. So we have 2x and 15, so we need to, we already have the 2x, let's move the 15. So here we have room for 9 of them, 
and then we'll have to put the remaining ones here. So that's why I said make x large enough so we can put everything in it. So our final answer will be the denominator is 5x because that's the width of the entire rectangle and the part that is shaded is 15 singletons plus 2x's. 2 is this width here and x is this width here. All right, see if you can do the next one. You don't have to uh, draw a picture to visualize the addition, but I just want you to try and see if you can add uh, these two rational expressions. Pause the video and try it on your own. Again, you can see you have three copies of 1 over x plus 7, two copies of 1 over x plus 7, so that will give you five copies of 1 over x plus 7 or 5 over x plus 7.